graduates have made their final high school decisions, while our very first graduating class from 2017 has announced their college plans. In addition to numerous linguistic accomplishments, such as induction into the Spanish Honor Society, top scores and AP exams, and seal of biliteracy designations, which you all have to look forward to, so many of our graduates have gone on to excel in STEM subjects in high school, winning math and science awards, and continuing continuing in the development of their tech skills through focus tracks and schools with dedicated programs. And now, as our very first class of graduates is heading off to college, we see that trend continue at the undergraduate level, with majors from cellular and molecular biology to computer science to nuclear engineering at top schools across the country like Yale, University of Michigan, Northeastern, Stevens Institute, and NJIT, several with minors in language or international studies. It's so exciting for us at the school to see this trajectory play out beyond Ola's doors. This has really led me to reflect on the critical importance of the foundation we establish here at Ola, beyond the rigorous core academic program, both in terms of bilingual skills, which we know are essential to an increasingly interconnected world and globalized economy, and in terms of the rich STEM programming that all students benefit from over the course of their time at Ola. All of our students learn coding, robotics, graphic design, 3D modeling, and the basics of engineering. This is not something that students opt into as electives or attract for according to aptitude or interest. We know that women and people of color are underrepresented in STEM fields, and we want to be part of the change that opens up all doors for all students to the opportunities of tomorrow. This is who we are as a school. And essential to that effort is an approach that brings students together to support one another and lift each other up. When one of us succeeds, we all succeed. It's not a zero-sum game, and there's plenty of success and joy for all of us. That is something that we want our graduates to take with them out into the world. This generation has a lot to tackle in terms of big issues like climate change, social justice, cybersecurity, and a polarized society, and they will need to generate radical, creative solutions that require collaboration, empathy for those directly impacted, and a great sense of urgency as well as the integrity to do the right thing when called upon to step up and use your individual skills and talents for the good of the community. None of us can do it alone. It requires a revolution of kindness and a willingness to share the burden with our peers. It is our hope that the education we've provided our students with over the past nine years has created the foundation for the next generation of world changers and impact makers across a variety of fields with a skill set that gives them the freedom to choose their own path. We know that excellent critical thinking skills, a strong grasp of history, the ability to communicate effectively in two languages, a toolkit of STEM skills to build upon, and a worldview that brings diverse groups of people together to collaborate and learn from one another are essential to this effort. Ola's class of 2021 is just heading off to high school, and they have decades ahead of them to continue developing their skills, finding their paths, and making their impact felt. But graduates, if there's anything that recent history has shown us, it is that youth is not a barrier to affecting change. You can help create the world you want to be part of today in ways big and small, and prepare yourself to be an active part of it by choosing to engage and make your voices heard. It's an exciting time, and I know you are all up for the challenge. We are so, so very proud of the students before you today for all that they've accomplished, and we are proud to send them on to the next stage of their educational journey as representatives of OPA. Congratulations, class of 2021. We are all rooting for you and we will continue to be by your side as you progress along your journey. I would now like to invite Mayor Robin Dollar to address our students. Good afternoon. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. This, this is perhaps the, the most beautiful, beautiful graduation ceremony I've, I've ever been to. Uh, with this backdrop. I just want to thank Jen, Jen Sargent, as well as Nicole Camerata, the Board of Trustees, um, my friend Council President Ramos, and um, you know everyone here who's made this happen. Uh, 
uh, Jen uh, Sargent said it very correctly in that it really takes a team uh, to get this far. Uh, but first I'd like to just address the students very briefly. Um, I also have a, um, a daughter who's graduating in a few hours over at Elysian Charter School. Um, and um, she's gonna go on to, to ninth grade. But, um, you know, I, I know that feeling of, of uh, you know, jitters uh, in the family. Uh, I'll be going straight to her graduation after this. Um, and how, how proud of a moment it is. Um, you know, think about when you were in pre-K or in kindergarten, first grade, and now you're here, you know, with your caps and gowns, and you've made it. It's really something that I think is uh, something to be proud of, and I can say that on behalf of the city of Hoboken, we're very proud of you as well. And we're also proud of Ola. Ola is one of the shining stars of the city of Hoboken. It's the only, uh, Nicole just told me this a few minutes ago, it's the only school in the state of New Jersey that's a 90-10% immersion school for Spanish language. That in itself is incredible and it's a testament to the hard work and dedication of its leadership, its parents, and its students. So, you know, on, on behalf of the city, this is your day. Have fun. I just want to say I'm so proud of all of you and to the parents. Uh, you know, give your mom and dad a big hug, uh, your, or your caregiver a big hug mm -hmm. when you get home today. Um, they're very proud of you. You know, we, we all did it as a team. Enjoy the day, enjoy the, the weekend, enjoy the summer, and better things to come. Take, congratulations. Dr. Shady brings years of experience in industry, designing and developing medical devices for her research in biomechanics biomaterials, and the enhancement of medical device design through teaching pedagogy, with a particular interest in medical solutions for the pediatric domain. Dr. Shady is passionate about cultivating and preparing women in the STEM fields through early engagement and education, and she has written a children's picture book about a seven-year-old girl who saves the day through biomedical engineering and ingenuity. In addition to numerous journal articles, she has also written a book of technical terms in biomedical engineering translated between English and Arabic. There's so much synchronicity between Dr. Shady's areas of expertise and interest in Ola's mission, and we're extremely pleased that she could be with us today to share a few words with the graduates. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Shady. Thank you for that introduction, and thank you for inviting me today. I'm very excited to be here to join in celebrating this wonderful occasion. First of all, congratulations to the class of 2021. You should be very proud of yourselves. You've won impressive awards, competed in science Olympiads, and took challenging courses. To the families, teachers, and administrators, congratulations to you as well. You should know that your support through this process has made an enormous impact on your students. I'm sure you're very proud of your graduates as they enter this new chapter. For me, it's been quite a few years since I graduated from middle school. As a young girl from Queens, New York, I never imagined what laid ahead in my future. All I knew was I wanted to do something big. As I entered into high school and began to discover some of the topics I loved and some of the topics that I didn't quite so much love, like dissecting my first rat and putting their skeleton back together, I thought, yeah, I want to be a medical doctor. And that's the path that I sought. But when I entered college and discovered engineering, that's when things got interesting and a lot more fun. I quickly realized that I could combine my passion for science with creativity, imagination, and innovation involved in engineering. I was hungry for more. I got my master's working on prosthetic limbs and worked for a medical device company designing syringes, but I was still hungry for more. I enrolled in a PhD program and developed contact lenses with antibiotics and a dental suture with drugs embedded that could be used for periodontal disease or wound site infections. There were challenges, hurdles, being a woman in engineering, but I kept pushing through because of my hunger for more. Today, 
I continue to work on developing medical devices and teaching students about the fascinating world of helping making people's lives better in an engineering way. Graduates, remember, all of your efforts, all of your obstacles, all of those rigorous math classes, the late night studying, it's going to pay off in the end. Keep working hard, learning new things, building solutions, and most importantly, pursuing your passion. You'll know that you're in the right place when you're hungry for more. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shady, for that insight and encouragement. The class of 2021 has among its members a variety of artists, performers, athletes, scientists, engineers, mathematicians, and wordsmiths. And for all their different interests and personalities, they are all, all each fiercely competitive and unshakably determined when they set their minds to a goal. In fact, this class is so competitive that when we began to measure students' grade point averages over the course of their middle school career, only 0.2 percentage points separated the two highest grade point averages that designated this year's valedictorian and salutatorian. Moreover, <laughs> once this trimester ended, we were so excited to find that we had not one, but two students earned the very same overall GPA, giving us a tie for the salutatorian role. Amalia Baje and Madeline Cohen both had the second highest averages maintained over the course of their middle school years. These students have performed at consistently high academic levels throughout their time at OLA, have demonstrated great care and effort toward the quality of their work, and have been very engaged and positive members of our student community, participating actively in a variety of activities outside of the classroom. At first I thought I would spend this time talking to you about the, their grades and their academic habits that these ladies developed as students at OLA. But we all know that learning is so much more than the final number on your report card or on your transcript. So instead, I want to take just one minute to tell you what Amalia Baje and Madeline Cohen have taught us about excellence during the past four years. From Amalia, we learned that even when we face really tough challenges or when we have really rough days, no challenges last forever and no period of uncertainty is never ending. From her journey, we learned that quiet fortitude is often stronger than injustice and being an upstander really does mean standing up for the right thing. Even when you have to be the first one standing along Stand me alone until others join you. Sorry. Okay. From Maddie, we learned that true maturity is shown when you can reflect on your mistakes, when you can own up to where you may have faltered, and then take swift action to course correct. Our time with Maddie reminded us that grit, determination, and genuine goodwill triumphs all negativity. And keeping a positive attitude in spite of adversity really does open doors and opens minds. Throughout their time at Ola, these young ladies have shared these and many other lessons with us as a school community. So at this time, please welcome Amalia Baje and Madeline Cohen as they present their co-salutatorian addresses and let us learn from their example one last time. Gracias, Mrs. Medina, and good afternoon, Ms. Sergeant, Senorita Brisqueta, teachers, staff, parents, my fellow graduates, and my OLA family. I'd like to welcome you guys to our graduation and thank you for making today a reality. We've come together to celebrate our personal and academic achievements, but I'd also like for us to challenge ourselves to find greater heights in this next chapter of our lives. I always thought it was funny when adults said, it feels like that was yesterday. But as I sat to write these words, so many memories came flooding back, and now I understand what they meant. I vividly remember my first day in kindergarten. Little did I know how much the teachers that day 
but prepare me for the years that followed. I remember one assignment in particular where each of us was instructed to write a full sentence, which in my mind was an impossible task. I sat on my chair terrified, crying, and shaking, looking at others doing their best. I was paralyzed by my fear of failure. But my very new friends encouraged me, and my teachers sat right by my side to tell me that if I'd never tried, I'd never have a chance to succeed. Si no pongo el esfuerzo, nunca voy a saber mis límites ni mis poderes. Since then, I've always made an effort to challenge myself and push past my limits. And I know that all of my peers have done the same. In fact, one way we learned how to challenge ourselves was through our relationship with Senor Paco, our third grade class pet. <laughs> Whenever a student would show excellence in class, Senor Paco would allow us to hold on to Senor Paco for the day. Although to others, Senor Paco just seemed like a small wooden toy snake, to us he was a golden trophy. He allowed us to show off our hard work, let us challenge each other academically, and gave us a common goal to work towards as individuals. Señor Paco nos unió como clase. Ola taught us how to be bilingual and prepared us for high school and beyond. Ola has also made us biliterate and bicultural. As a bicultural young woman from Dominican and Cuban descent, I most value how Ola has taught us to love and value the different cultures represented within our community. Our diverse, dedicated, and amazing teachers really do reflect Ola's core values and model them for us as students providing opportunities to volunteer at events like Dia de los Muertos, by bringing in guest speakers to assemblies in class, and our daily positivity project discussions. I, have, I haven't made up my mind on what I want to do when I grow up, but I do know that whatever that is, it must involve being part and working on behalf of a community which, just like Ola, aspires and ignites change, because we all know that in this world, there's much room for it. I haven't made up my mind to my friends, Ola class of 2021, we stuck through it all, including a pandemic. I feel lucky to say that I consider you hermanas y hermanos and hope that the years to come are just as fruitful and fun for each one of you. I will miss you and hope the bonds we form carry us through life's many challenges. Los quiero mucho, felicidades. Now I have the pleasure to introduce my co-salutatorian, Madeline Cohen. profesores, familias y mis compañeros graduados y muchas gracias por acompañarnos mientras celebramos nuestra clase y su graduación a Ola. Estamos muy agradecidos de que ustedes pudieron celebrar este logro con nosotros. Es un honor estar aquí como su historian o la que pronuncia el discurso de despedida de la clase de 2021 hoy. Ha sido un año duro, pero después de todo, Estamos orgullosos de poder decir que estamos graduando y moviendo hacia cosas más grandes. Este año hemos experimentado unas condiciones inesperadas y muchas de nuestras clases se realizado en modo virtual. Todos tuvieron que ajustarse a estas circunstancias y escuchando a cada uno de los maestros preguntarnos si estaban compartiendo su batalla se convirtió en la nueva normalidad. Los deportes se cancelaron, todos compraron mascarillas y todos se quedaron oh, y todos se quedaron y todos, y todos se quedaron en sus casas durante meses. Tuvimos que tomar la foto de nuestra clase con Zoom y creo que todos reconocemos que no fue la mejor. A pesar de ser difícil y suponer meses en adaptarnos, esta clase pudo perseverar. Hoy puedo hablar de todas las cosas duras que pasaron este año, pero esto no cambiaría la, la situación. Insisto en ver el lado positivo y poder decirles a mis compañeros de la clase 2000, 2021, lo logramos. Aunque la mayoría de ustedes han estado juntos durante nueve años, yo solo he estado con ustedes durante ocho. Aún así, tengo muchas memorias para compartir. En el segundo grado, hicimos las clases en las clases móviles, lo cual vimos como extremadamente genial en este momento. Además, en este grado, 
tuvimos nuestro primer viaje de campamento, que se convirtió rápidamente en una tradición que todos esperaban cada uno. En el cuarto grado, también tuvimos muchas excursiones y lecciones divertidas. Todos recordamos Class Dojo y el orgullo que sentimos cuando teníamos suficientes puntos para comprar un premio. Uno de los premios favoritos era un fiesta de pizza, lo que podrías compartir con un compañero de tu selección. Este unió la casa y muchas personas se hicieron amigos más cercanos. También fuimos al campamento Mason, donde podíamos pasar la noche como si fuera un campamento del verano. Siempre a la hora, siempre a la hora de comer, pedíamos chocolate caliente hasta que la señorita Picciarelli lo prohibió. Muchas otras memorias se crearon durante este tiempo, incluyendo los conejillos de India, aprendiendo la anatomía, haciendo pequeños negocios durante el recreo, la fiesta de misterio y más. Más recientemente, tuvimos la experiencia de nuestra vida cuando pudimos escuchar a un sobreviviente del holocausto, el señor Paul Gallen, compartir sus experiencias durante esta época espantosa. Cada uno de nosotros aprendimos mucho, incluyendo la importancia de aceptar a los demás y las consecuencias de no hacerlo. Esto tiene que ver con la ciudadanía global, que es uno de los valores esenciales de OLA. Con esta lección, pudimos combinar todo el conocimiento que hemos adquirido de las clases de estudios sociales y artes del lenguaje y pudimos entender la pena que los vieron siento en, en esta época. Por lo memorables que sean, los temas como la conjugación de verbos imperativos y aprender a factorizar polinomios, esto no es lo que voy a contar a mis nietos. Más bien, les contaré sobre las personas maravillosas que me rodean, porque ellos, estudiantes y profesores, son los que hacen que Ola sea única como escuela. Mi experiencia no hubiera sido la misma sin ustedes, y no puedo parar de agradecerles por todo. Si ustedes, nuestros maestros, no nos hubieran aguantado, no habría estudiantes aquí esta tarde, y por eso estamos agradecidos. ¡Felicitaciones, clase de 2021! the student with the highest grade point average in his or her graduating class is awarded the honor of representing the class as valedictorian and asked to present a closing message to our graduates. This year's valedictorian has been preparing for this role since her very first day in middle school. True story. <laughs> in fact, I think she began preparing for this role the summer before fifth grade with her summer reading project because my very first meeting with her involved a teary conversation about literature, followed by a discussion about her lofty goals. Since that day, Brooke Stempler has consistently held a standard of excellence in all of her classes. Although Brooke definitely lights up when she talks about her Science Olympiad projects, she is also a phenomenal writer. She delivers clear, well-supported responses that her teachers often use as exemplar models to showcase what constitutes a strong response. In addition to her exemplary scholarship, Brooke embodies our core values of integrity and global citizenship by doing the right thing even when it is hard and by advocating for justice through her participation in La Liga de, la, de Justicia Social. Although she still clashes with her little sister, Julia, more often than her parents probably would like, Brooke can be counted upon to speak up when she sees that something is unfair, and I may or may not have been tempted to run the other way when she rounded the corner with Maddie and Amalia in tow, because I knew that by the end of our conversation, she and her friends were gonna rationalize me <laughs> into shifting a deadline or adjusting the length of a written response. All joking aside, Dwight Englewood is so very lucky that Brooke Stempler is on her way there as a freshman because this young lady has the type of grit, passion, and heart that is gonna make our world a better place. I present to you our class of 2021 valedictorian, Brooke Stempler.
behalf of the 8th grade class, I would like to thank Ms. Sargent, Senorita Brisqueta, Ms. Medina, faculty, staff, and parents for supporting us throughout both elementary and middle school at Ola. If not for all your support, we would not be the young adults we are today. Our 8th grade class has been together for nine years, starting in kindergarten. During those nine years, we made great memories at Ola. From our annual camping trips, to seeing Bohemian Rhapsody in the cafeteria, and Mivoy at the end of Senor Mako's class, <laughs> to school dances, to Camp Mason, to field days, to listening to Senor Volca's rap, to our little businesses in fourth grade, we had so much fun together. We are a diverse class with different interests, including playing sports, musical theater, dance, science olympiad, art, etc. We have one thing in common, our perseverance. As a class, we persevered through significant challenges. Our past year and a half has been shaped by the COVID-19 pandemic, which resulted in social distancing, remote learning, isolation, and other unexpected challenges. But as a school and a class, we persevered and adapted. We worked online, maintained our after-school activities, and did our best to engage using Zoom and FaceTime to stay connected with family and friends. The pandemic was not the first challenge our class faced. During kindergarten, we experienced Hurricane Sandy, where we lost our school for a while and had to learn in trailers but we persevered and adapted. It is our ability to persevere that has strengthened us all and led us to succeed as we developed our personal interests and passions. And yet, we still have so much more work to do and so much more progress to make. As a global community, we have persevered during this pandemic. We have persisted while following guidelines and waiting to obtain vaccines for everyone in hopes of ending this pandemic. As a society, we will continue to persevere when we are called to face whatever future challenges come our way. We have done this so far by relying on one another as a community, as we have committed one another to achieve greatness in our utmost potential. We will continue to do this no matter where we land in life. As we progress toward our ultimate potential, we will continue to use our dual language speaking abilities to develop strong relationships. Our bilingualism will allow us to communicate with a large global community and connect with others. We have started doing this through our exchange with Mile in both Spanish class and La Liga de la Justicia Social. Esta conexión es necesaria para progresar como sociedad. Esta conexión provocará entendimiento mutuo y colaboración al asumir problemas globales. Although we will all be going to different places and having different experiences for high school, I know that you will all achieve greatness. Our determination and perseverance will guide us through any hard times and our bilingualism will allow us to unite others and become leaders. No solo estamos preparados para el futuro, estamos preparados para liderarlo. Not only are we prepared for the future, we are prepared to lead the future. bittersweet one. Collectively, we share more than just four years of memories together. Memories that will serve as your foundation as you build new friendships and learn new concepts and try new skills. As you maneuvered the often rocky transition from young child into the proud teenagers sitting before us today, your class has reminded me in a really profound way of the old Spanish saying, dime con quien andas y te diré King it is. Tell me who you walk with and I'll tell you who you are. This graduating class transitioned to middle school as a tight-knit community. That stick-to-itiveness and willingness to negotiate on the behalf of the collective whole 
is one of your most admirable traits. Hold on to that sense of righteousness and make sure you stand behind one another as you face down whatever next obstacles may come your way. In our time together at the middle school, we have had the opportunity to laugh together, to debate together, and to grow together. I had the chance to teach you how to write your very first racer paragraph. Mm -hmm. right before Senor Cantillo joined us as your ELA teacher. And I have got to take this last chance to remind you that when you get to high school, your teachers are not going to say, write this in racer format. I promise you, they mean, write it in racer format. <laughs> and you know what? If you really want to impress somebody, whip out that Anesti and be like, Toma. You're going to be your teacher's favorite writers when you do that. Over the past few years, your teachers have pushed you and guided you to push yourself to work harder and stretch yourself further. And now as we stand at the close of your time in our care, I hope you continue to demand of the world the excellence that you came to expect from yourselves over the last nine years. And so I will close with Senorita Arrisqueta's sage advice. Hold on to your core values of kindness integrity, scholarship, global citizenship, and innovation as you move on to your next destination. They are a recipe for success no matter what school you go to or what challenges your life faces. You see, here in the cocoon of Ola, we have tried to wrap you in our core values. But in high school and beyond, it is you who will have to wrap the world in the values that we know will propel you to success. And so here is our wish for you. We wish that you continue to be kind in your words and actions, even when you won't get credit for it. We wish that you continue to do the right thing and lead by example, even when it's hard and even when no one's watching. We wish that you continue to hold yourselves to high academic expectations embrace challenges and persevere through them. We wish that you continue to show pride in being bilingual, biliterate, and bicultural, and that you seek to make the world a more equitable place for people of all identities, backgrounds, and beliefs, starting with those that are closest to you. And we wish that you continue to exercise your imagination and learn the skills you need to be tomorrow's leaders. At this time, I invite Ms. Sargent and Senorita Brisqueta to join me as we confer the diploma to the graduating class of 2021. <laughs> Melanie Alvarenga. Emilio Branco. Gabriela Brion. Nicholas Buckley. Cohen. Amaya Cofre. Claudio Cofre Jr.
Christopher Coromina. Chelsea Coto. <laughs> Ian Crespi. Noah Gibbs Garcia. <laughs> Monica Griggs. Madison Hines. Mateo Comer. Mm -hmm. Ariana Madrid. Nathaniel Palmarino. Isabella Quesada. Rodriguez. <laughs> Declan Schultz. <laughs> Gianessa Serpa. Brooke Stempler. 
Dylan Thomas. Lucas Thomas. Hudson Singh. Olivia Varela. so glad we practiced like 14 times. <laughs> See, Masse, why do we have to practice? This is it. All right, so now, as we launch into your next big adventure, please join me in the traditional turning of the tassel. We practice this, guys, I promise. Good job. The turning of the tassel from right to the left side graduation cap is a symbolic gesture that represents moving on to the next phase of our students' education. And so students, together, we will now grab the tassel with our left hand and move it together from right to left.